Hello and welcome to another video. This video is about the equation of a circle and all you got to do in this problem is just identify the center of the circle and the radius of the circle. But there's a slight problem. The problem is you're given the general form of a circle and it's almost um, impossible for you to know what the center is. Well, if you do this many times, you'll be able to see just from the general equation, but you have to do additional calculations to be able to tell what the radius is. But just looking at this, I can tell you what the center is, but the radius might require a lot more work. And that's why it's always good for you to know um, how to write the equation of a circle in the standard form. So what I'm going to do is show you what the standard form is and then tell you what you're supposed to write as your answer. Okay, so before we get in the video, if this is your first time of watching any of my videos, which will be this one, then you should subscribe, okay? If you find this useful, you find many other videos on this channel useful, and um, you should leave a comment, a good comment, and make sure you share it, okay? Um, let's get into the video. So, the first thing you wanna do is recall you must know so you what you recall is what you know okay so you must know what the standard equation of a circle is and let me write it here so what you need to know is that for any circle you have it has to look like this x minus h squared plus y minus k squared will be equal to r squared it is so straightforward and simple r is the radius and what is the center so if i were to write the center of this circle here what i would write is just this h and k whatever number is here remember these two are subtractions and what the radius is is just r so my task at this moment is to rewrite this using some algebraic manipulation completing the squares in in particular to rewrite this to look like this and as soon as it looks like this I have my center and I have my radius okay so let's do that on the side of the board so remember completing the squares let me just give you a quick example so you see what you're supposed to do let's say I give you something like um, x squared minus 6x and I say you should make this a perfect square this is not a perfect square this is a rectangle Remember, when you have a square, it is something multiplying itself. That's why you call it a square. But there's no way you can write this so that you can multiply something by itself. Let's say I factor out x. What I have is x minus 6. This is not a square. This is a rectangle because x minus 6 is not equal to x under any condition. No matter what x is, x minus 6 cannot be equal to x. So this is a rectangle. But we want to make this a square. How do you make it a square? So what we do is... We, let me get rid of this. So what we do is we take half of this. So half of this is going to be negative 3. And then we're going to square it. So if you take half of this and make a square out of it, you see what I did? I divided this by 2, the coefficient of x, divided by 2 and square it. You're going to end up with x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now this is a perfect square. How do I know? Because if you factor this, you're going to end up with x minus 3 squared. Mm. So we need this skill. We need to transform this so it looks like this. You see, now we can tell what the center is. If this was our problem, we know the center is 3. So that's what we need to do on that side. And let's get rid of this and apply it to that. Okay, so I have the question written up here. And I want you to see that you could do completing the squares for both the x squared and the y squared terms. So let's see. I'm going to write x squared minus 10x. So I'm bringing this next to it. And I'm going to do the same thing for the y squared. I'll bring this next to it, 2y. And just to be sane, I'm going to move this 10 to the other side because it has to look like this. So the actual constants go to the other side. So I'm going to say this is equal to negative 10. Okay, so let's complete this square here. See, remember what, what we do when we complete the squares, we take half of this and we square it. So this is going to be x squared 
minus 10x, then I'm going to add, be adding plus, if I take half of this, it's going to be negative 5. The square of that is going to be 25, so that's plus 25. But um, I'm supposed to just have x squared minus 10x. I've added 25 just from, I just took it from thin air and added it. Well, in order to make this equation the same thing, I have to add 25 to the other side too. Okay, remember that the purpose of doing this is so I can have a perfect square like this. So here, I know this, when factored, is going to be x minus 5 squared. But now I'm going to the other side, and I'm going to write minus 10 plus 25. So I do the same thing for this one. It's going to be plus y squared plus 2y. If I take half of this, it's going to be 1. The square of 1 is just going to be 1 plus 1. Well, I have to add 1 here too. So I have to add 25 here. I added 1 here. I've added the same thing to the other side. So I haven't changed anything. Okay, so now what I've got here is if I do the same thing to this, this when factored is going to be y plus 1 squared. How do I know what numbers to put in here? It's just whatever you got when you divided this by 2. So divide negative 10 by 2, you get negative 5. Divide plus 2 by 2, you get plus 1. That's it. That's it. Okay? On the right-hand side, what does this tell us? Negative 10 plus 25 plus 1 is going to give us 16. Mm. So we have x minus 5 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 4 squared. We have answered the question because the question says, what is the center? What is the radius? Well, obviously, I can tell what the center is. Here, the center is the point 5. Well, I can say 1 because remember, this has to be y minus, so it has to be minus 1 here. And what is the radius? The radius is r, whatever is squared. What is squared here? It's 4. And that's it. So completing the squares is the greatest skill that you need to apply here. If you can do that, you can always answer this question. I hope this was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up, like I said at the beginning, and be subscribed. Give it a share. Leave a comment in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.